Hello. Thank you for watching the data advertise yeah? uh, Let's fix something. What do we have here? We have a nice Toshiba laptop. This, these Toshiba laptops are quite uh, solid. i3, Windows 7. And the problem with this one, like... Yeah? Like many other laptops, the laptop is dead. So the charger is plugged in. We can check the charger. Let me switch on volts. A multimeter. Let's try to fix this laptop from a beginner point of view. Yeah, that's very important. I'll try to allocate more time for this job. You can see the charger. Check there on the multimeter, 19.2 volts. But the charger is fine. There's nothing wrong with the charger. Plug the charger. And we have absolutely no light. And if you try to press the power button. Power button press, nothing happened. It will not come on, we have no light again. Yeah, It's just dead. Can be a charging port, can be. But Toshiba strong charging port yeah, give me one second give me one second Okay, sorry, but my colleague goes to buy some food and uh, I'm alone here. Well, let's open this one. It's no point to spend time. This comes from another computer shop, yeah? This laptop. Uh, they probably they opened, they tried to fix it, they couldn't fix it, they sent it here. So I don't know, I haven't opened this laptop, so I have no idea. But usually, yeah, usually when you see a dirty laptop, actually it's more easy to fix instead of having a half working one like poro no picture <laughs> you know this it is that it's most likely you have a problem on the power supplies or on the worst case super io yeah let me find a screwdriver take out the charger take out the battery Oh, BIOS battery there. You can try and remove the BIOS battery, but I don't think it's the case here. Usually when you have a frozen BIOS, you have a charging light. Yeah? The laptop is not coming on, but you still have a charging light. And I'm sure they tried already to reset the BIOS, you know, it's a computer shop.
few more screws. Hard drive, let's take out the hard drive. Do we have more screws? Oh, give me a second. Okay. How this is supposed to be open? So we took the screws out. Away from the front. Let's take out the keyboard. So let's say from a viewer point of view. Hmm. I suppose a viewer has a multimeter, you know? Maybe he doesn't have a power supply, but let's say he has a multimeter, okay? Okay, the back is coming out. It's a nice board, simple, everything you see, it's, it's here on the display, you can see everything, power supplies, things. It's simple. Let me first check, yeah? Let me first check. And after that we can carry on from a beginner point of view. Charging for good. Yeah, we can carry on, yeah? <laughs> okay. So, let's say you are a beginner. You don't know what's going on here. The best thing is to take the board out first. Taking the board out. You know, many times if you have like a water damage, you can see the water. On the board from this side you can't see it but maybe it's on the other side you don't decide with the keyboard you know so first let's take out the board we don't need the wi-fi we need a charging port that's true that's true We have a few more screws. The fan is coming out. Let's 
So all I want to do is to take out the board and keep the charging port. Let's fix this board with the charging port uh, plugged in, yeah? That's the board. It's a nice board. We have a Novoton uh, Super I.O. Let's leave this on one side. So it, it, it's, it's like a puzzle for a beginner. Whatever is here, it's a puzzle. Yeah, you don't know exactly what's here. You, you, you know, this is it, this is way too complicated for a beginner. Okay. So all I want to do with you is to follow whatever is coming from the charging port. Yeah, because we have to find out if you we our main 90 volts power rail is present before going on co more complicated things and check the 3.3 identify the 3.3 volts power supply so all i want to do is to identify our main power rail yeah so we have the charging port you can see here two wires for plus two for minus that's only to carry more current so actually the two red wires are together and the black are together okay so you can see the charging port is soldered here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's the charging port. Four pins here, four pins there. Okay. So I don't even know what schematics where. Yeah, but all I want to do, take the multimeter, use the multimeter on the diode mode, or even better, if you have beeping mode, you have beeping mode. Beeping mode is even better. You can find the things. Uh, more easier so dial mode you can do it even on ohm, ohm, ohm modes yeah but will be longer because always you have put you have to look on the multimeter that's long beeping you can watch on the board and you can hear the beep yeah so just ignore the ground the ground is everywhere you see here that's ground this is ground this is ground this is ground, that's ground, all these metals are ground, so you have ground everywhere, you just ignore the ground. So we have the plus, yeah, let's go under the microscope. This is just a beginner guide, yeah, let's see, you're a beginner and, uh, you know, you don't want to play with power supply and current and things like that. Let's make it simple. So all I want to do, just follow the truck just follow the plus yeah so the plus red wires here two red wires are soldered here together so you see car together on the same truck it is on focus yeah it is okay so obviously these are together and they are going where you keep one here and it's going you can see where it's going is they're going on this carbon uh, resistor we many people wrong they assume it's an inductor but it's not it's just a carbon non-inductive resistor just make a research about uh, about this yeah the resistors inductive and non-inductive this um, is made by carbon granule you know an inductor it's a more complicated things it involves like a coil like a core it's not it's not a inductor so it's going here you can see so keep this here yeah glue what, what glue this okay it's okay don't worry so from here to here like you can see on the multimeter we have zero because it's one truck after this carbon resistor is zero because uh, it's zero yeah the resistance is very low and look at the truck. The truck is coming to this big thing, which is a fuse. Yeah, so it's coming here. Look on the multimeter, it's zero. So from here, it's coming here. It's zero. So the fuse is good. You can see zero there. So the fuse is good. And from here, it's going somewhere, I suppose, here. Yes. So look on the multimeter, zero. Yeah. So you just found first MOSFET 
but if you check every pin will be zero because these are all soldered together okay all are soldered together yeah so these four are the inputs because they're soldered together so this is the input it cannot be the output you know because the current is coming from this direction yeah the plus is coming like that here yeah if this is the input it should be an output the output is this one you have three pins together yeah you can see three pins together and one separate probably you can't see but try to make it visible yeah so three pins together and one separate which is gate these three pins together is the output on this point our search it's ended so you cannot check with the multimeter from the charging port here you see this, look at this one this one this, we checked from here so now we start with the next truck yeah this is a semiconductor and obviously here will be will, will not you will not have zero on the multimeter yeah so what we will do we will follow next one from here to see where it's going so the output of this mosfet and we can see check that the truck all these three pins the truck is going on these three pins yeah you can see them you can check with the multimeter you see zero 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 yeah so what do we have here three pins together connected with three pins together so this is a truck yeah and obviously on the input of this mosfet he has an output this one on the output we have all four pins together all are together and you can see the truck is going on this resistor yeah you are already on your main 90 volts power rail yeah so you are saved you have the current sensor here current resistor so you are on your main 90 volts power rail if you have voltage here after these two mosfets if you have the voltage here you have 19 with the charger plugged in you have to stop on this point you stop and you go searching for the 3.3 .3 volts power supply yeah but that's different story so i'll plug the charger now and we will check together again the voltage same with the uh, what we done we just identify where the plus is going so now we'll see if the plus is going through all these components because he has to go yeah it's a must so i'll plug the charger yeah so we plug the charger the, the charger non desktop uh, we plug the charger now we'll check with the multimeter false we change the the multimeter on volts volts okay yeah and now i will keep because you check with the ground compare with the ground so i will keep this on ground or i can keep it here because these two points are ground or i can keep it here okay. i'll keep it here and we will check together from the charging port and the charging port is soldered here to check on the multimeter you have 19.2 volts you have you have after that is going the resistor after the resistor do we have 19 we have 19.2 after that we have the fuse do we have 19 we have 19 after the fuse we have 19 we do have 19 and the truck is going to this mosfet do we have 19 yes we have 19 after this this semiconductor this mosfet yeah we check again here on these three pins yeah do we have 19 no we don't have 19 we have 0 0.9 that's been this semiconductor it's you can say it's close because the current is not going or you can say it's open because if you if you see this like a switch the switch is like that yeah it's not close so it's this is supposed to be a wire this is just a switch 
on this configuration, on the input. But they are complex semiconductors. They are working on the power supplies as a switching devices, yeah? But not here. Here is just a switch. So, you see, my problem is on the output, we have 0 0.9. And obviously, if I go after this one, obviously, I have 0 0.9. And on the my current resistor, we have 0 0.9. So, you see, actually your voltage stopped there. Yeah, okay. So we have nothing on gate, probably it's a channel and MOSFET. But if you have a problem here, yeah, if you have a problem here on the input, my advice, don't spend the time too much because the things can go very complicated. Actually, the signals from these uh, two MOSFETs come from a chip which is uh, managing the things, yeah, like over voltage, over current, uh, thermal protection and more things like that. And we have no voltage on the gate, so the MOSFET is good, but we have no voltage there. What we can do, just to be easy, what you can do, what you can do, what I will do, I will keep the multimeter on ground, yeah, here, I'll take my tweezer, I will just short this thingy, yeah, and I will see if I have 19 volts. Do I have 19 volts here? What I'm doing wrong? I think the ground here is not very good. Do we have 19 here? Yes, check on the multimeter. We have 19. Do we have 19 volts on the output of this one, the second one? We have 19, so it's working fine. Do you have 19 on the current sensor? We have 19. If you have a shorted capacitor, you, you will not have voltage here. Yeah? So we don't have a shorted thing. A shorted capacitor. Okay? Or what we can do more, we can... Uh, because it's supposed to be voltage there. So we took the bridge and we have no voltage. Yeah? We can short the gate with the input and it will be same result. You can see on the multimeter 19. Yeah. So we just supply on this one, we just supply the power on the gate. And the MOSFET got open. Yeah. Or closed. So, you know, you know what I mean. It's just a wire now. So that's how you diagnose the things. And uh, yes, you can jump that most probably. I will advise you just jump it. You know, it's it's no point searching more. It's no point because, like how I said, the things can go very complicated. I will unplug the charger. Just wait for the solder iron. So you see on this case, we didn't use a power supply. But yeah, if you have uh, a shorted capacitor on any power supply, it will be a little bit more, uh, you know, tough. Be more hard to find the problem.
So if you have time to spend, you have schematics, here you can find exactly why this MOSFET is not open. What I did, I just breached the MOSFET because it's easy. Because I can. Yeah? Now indeed, the laptop doesn't have a over voltage protection. But if you remember, if you go back on my videos, yeah? We have a, a, a um, video when I try to burn a laptop. You remember that video? I try to burn it like properly. And I go up to like 25 volts and the laptop was still working fine. Yeah. So I would say it's a rare case when a power supply will rise the voltage like so high. Because still, you know, it's a switching power supply. I don't remember how this was. It was like that. That's the screen, the display. But then don't try to do what I did with the tweezer on the rest of the board because you see you have a lot of MOSFETs here. Don't try it. You'll make the things worse. Actually these are switching. They are not, you know, wires. Because obviously when you breach something, it's like a wire. You know what I mean? Don't try it. It's I'm just speaking about the first two MOSFETs starting from the charging port, that's all. And after that you can forget about uh, bridging MOSFETs, yeah? Just forget about that. Don't even try. Like how I said, uh, actually they are doing a pretty complicated job, the MOSFETs, yeah? Okay, let's just test it. Let's plug the connectors. Charging port. Charger. Power up. And is no okay. I have a plug the cable. Cable is plugged. Yeah, now we have the lights and the laptop is on. So you can see the LED lights and the laptop is low. LTC battery is low. That's the BIOS battery. So probably the BIOS was res uh, reset before. That, that's why he's saying that. We can uh, plug quickly the keyboard. There's no hard drive inside. But... So I'm on BIOS. Exit. And now it's fine. I will say it's no hard drive because it is no hard drive. No bootable device, but the laptop is working fine. Okay. So don't get me wrong, if you want to, you know, be a hero, find the, exactly, exactly the problem and you have time, do it. Do it. Absolutely. It, it's a lot, a lot to learn. Just finding exactly the fault and don't using a shortcut like how I'm using it. a shortcut to the uh, to the way to the laptop to be working yeah okay I'm just speaking about the input part from the charging port that's all because the other things are, are a little bit more complicated but the input part and all my, most of the faults that are here on the input part okay so uh, 
thank you for watching like and subscribe if you like the video and see you on the next one yeah i think we have a very complicated job so hopefully i can do a video about that bye